Today we're talking about the economic philosophy of Bernie Sanders and answering the question, how are you going to pay for it? Spoiler alert, it's a lot more printing money than you might have guessed. The biggest obstacle to funding the Green New Deal might end up being the printer keeps flashing toner low. Oh, just lost connection to the computer. Wait, you clicked print how many times? Maybe we don't need to cut the military budget after all. Enter Sanders' economic policy advisor and possible treasury nominee Stephanie Kelton, who is a huge proponent of modern monetary theory. I mean, she literally wrote the book on it. Now I realize that one of the most boring combination of three words in the English language might be modern monetary theory, but let me hit you with this attention getting headline. The economist who believes the government should just print more money. Intrigued? Now before we get into it, my goal in this video is to explain this new economic theory, not dismantle it. In fact, there's going to be quite a bit of mantling. Let me know if you want that video in the comments. At the core of this theory, everything from taxes to bond issues to Federal Reserve policy is designed to accomplish one of two goals, either pumping money into the economy or out of the economy. The government no longer needs to worry about taxes for the purposes of paying for things because, well, we have this nice color printer right over here and guess what, the ink low sign isn't flashing. The best way to visualize this philosophy is to think of the American economy as a bathtub of cash. If you're not draining out money fast enough, you're going to have an overflowing bathtub. More money chasing the same goods meant that the purchasing power of the Zimbabwean dollar fell. You needed more dollars to buy the same stuff as before. In other words, as the newly printed money began flooding the market, prices began to rise. Yeah, you're not going to want that bathtub overflowing. Keep a good plumber on standby. At the same time, though, you don't want to let all the water out of the bath either. The administration is trying to tackle a two-fold problem. Not enough consumer spending in the retail economy because there's not enough consumer credit in the overall economy. And so the Federal Reserve and Treasury are pumping a jaw-dropping $800 billion directly into the credit markets. Oh God, turn on that money hose. We ran out of cash here and I'm drying out. It's a real balancing act that's generally been solved by just soaking. With modern monetary theory though, the thinking is a government that prints and borrows its own currency cannot be forced to default since it can always create money to pay creditors. New money can also pay for government spending and tax revenues are unnecessary. Alright, this is either the smartest monetary policy breakthrough in history or a get rich quick scheme that will result in me waking up next week with no money or kidneys. To dig a little deeper, the controversial part of this theory isn't the potential increases of spending that it will cause, but rather the idea of printing money as opposed to the good old fashioned patriotism of hoping China will lend it to us. So what is the difference between borrowing and printing money? Well, simple. When the government borrows money, they sell IOUs called bonds. You know, the thing your granddad bought you when you really wanted a PS4 for Christmas. So they're taking money out of supply and then spending it back into supply again. The tub's water level is staying the same. Think about it like getting a bucket of tub water and then dumping it out on your head to wash out the shampoo. Water level stayed the same, but something got accomplished in the meantime. When you print money on the other hand, you're not taking money out of circulation to respend it, so you're filling the tub. Now so far this has all been theoretical, but I can actually bring it into the real world. Although take all this with a whole shaker's worth of salt, because Sanders will end up probably paying for his plans through a combination of increased taxes, government debt, and printing money. But I can throw a few numbers at you to give you a rough idea of what we're dealing with here. First, how big's our tub? Well, according to the Federal Reserve, America has about $4 trillion in cash floating around being saved in easily accessible locations. Alright, so how much money are we going to need to print or borrow to finance this plan? 
Well, the general number is, if Sanders can somehow blackmail Congress into passing all of his spending and taxing plans, we're going to end up needing about $25 trillion in the whole over the next 10 years. That's after the new tax revenues. And this gives us about $2.5 trillion a year pouring into our $4 trillion tub, or being borrowed and spent in our tub economy. So if America is printing trillions of dollars and putting it into the economy, how do we keep this tub from overflowing? Well, the main strategy is taxation. The purpose of taxes, then, is to keep inflation in check. Spending is the accelerator, taxation is the brakes. So we do have more water flow again, but as long as the government can drain it out, we're going to keep the floor dry. Of course, there's one other huge tool at the government's disposal when it comes to managing inflation. The Federal Reserve. There's something I haven't told you about our bathtub economy quite yet. There's someone in there. That's right, when the Treasury's trying to keep that water level at a reasonable level, it's the Federal Reserve's job to keep that kid in check. You don't want him splashing water everywhere and overflowing the bath when the water level is high. But at the same time, you want him to splash around a little bit and keep the sides wet if the water level ever gets too low. Let me be very careful with my wording in this metaphor here because I can hear someone hitting the caps lock button, cracking their knuckles, and scrolling down to the comments section. In this metaphor, the kid splashing around in a near empty tub is making the water level seem higher than it actually is. The Fed achieves these stimulated higher water levels by cutting rates. Lower interest rates make it cheaper for people and businesses to borrow money for big purchases or new ventures. Second, Cutting interest rates makes it less profitable to keep money in bank accounts. Instead of saving, individuals and businesses may want to invest or spend that money. Basically, instead of the treasury printing new money, the more traditional method of changing money supply, or water level, was convincing people to take their money out of long-term investments and spend it. Treat yourself to that new TV. You deserve it. Especially because we lowered your savings account rate to the point where the biggest profit was that free toaster. When you're trying to fight inflation or an overflowing tub, controlling what the consumer or the person in the bath does is a huge tool. Sit still, save, and stop splashing so much. Or more positively put, the Fed's not taking the punch away from the party. They're just not spiking it anymore. Um, they're worried about some people getting a little tipsy on the sides, um, some real estate bubbles they're very concerned about in the commercial real estate market. And although they didn't state it explicitly, the run-up in the stock market that we've seen since the election has a lot of attributes of a bubble, and there's certainly going to be some concern about that within the circles of the Fed. So what role does modern monetary theory see for the Federal Reserve? Well, I was actually very surprised. Bernie Sanders and modern monetary theorists really antagonize the Federal Reserve because of a lack of trust in private markets and consumer spending. In their mind, the job of bathtub monitor should be left solely up to the federal government and the treasury rather than worrying about whether people are saving or spending money. If you want more money in the economy, well, we're going to print more money and put it in the economy. If you want less money in the economy, well, we're going to raise taxes and take money out of the economy. Makes sense. Sanders has a long history of criticizing pretty much every quarter of a percentage change in interest rates, although his reasons are more than just trying to maintain his anti-capitalist brand. You see, rate cuts stimulate the economy by encouraging firms and households to borrow, but that can engender risky levels of private sector debt. Government spending sidesteps these problems. So raise rates, right? Well, getting people to save and act more conservatively with their money to fight inflation in the process brings with it its own problems. When people start buying things, people stop employing as many employees. Rate rises can slow inflation, but they often work by inducing indiscriminate involuntary unemployment. It reminds me of a famous quote, a penny saved is a penny not spent in the service of supporting workers. The goal for modern monetary theorists seems to be to cut down on variables of individual choice in service of direct government control over the economy to achieve full employment, because the Treasury Department knows how to best serve the economy. 
Now, I don't want to be a fear monger and leave you thinking, oh man, if Bernie gets elected, he'll immediately go towards printing trillions of dollars and raising taxes by trillions of dollars. That's not what's going to happen. What I will say is that, when it comes down to budgetary problems, Sanders and his inner circle are approaching the problem with a very different perspective than your more mainstream square candidates, who ask questions like, Where's the other, where's the other 25 trillion dollars supposed to come from? At it's a certain good. point, you got to do the math. Well, we got it all up there right. on the internet. It's a payroll Senator tax, a payroll tax. Well, no, but even oh. after the payroll tax, oh. you still have a How are we going to pay off that after-tax $25 trillion gap? Eh, we'll manage. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you want to help me someday achieve my dream of having enough money to need to worry about inflation, hit up my Patreon page in the comments. Huge shout out to my new patron, Pashis Real, who just pledged $25 a month. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.